Hi, I'm Paul Russell, instructor and course developer at Point Blank Music School. And today we're going to be looking at Machine Jam and using it with Ableton Live. If you want to find out more about Machine and other courses we offer, go online to www.pointblankmusicschool.com. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Machine Jam. We're going to have a look at how the Ableton Live template for Machine Jam works. Right off the bat, everything kind of works the way you expect it to. So all the sort of play and record functions, changing tracks is literally just controlled by these group functions here. Um, you can also do things like change which tracks are armed for recording by holding shift. You can also access things like the metronome. So all those are easily available at just one sort of button combination. So let's get right into this here. On, on track one, I've got a drum rack set up. So let's start there and maybe put down a couple of rhythms. So you can see when I go into pad mode, I basically just have the 16 pads that you would normally see in drum rack. And let's basically get started with a little beat. So I'm gonna make sure my metronome is on. And I'm gonna go back to the main view and I'm just going to, by clicking on one of these pads, I'm basically creating a new clip and then I can record straight into that clip. So let's see what happens. Okay, so let's have a listen to it. So you can see it's automatically kind of set like how long the loop is. Um, I can quantize. So like you have with a machine when you're normally using it in its own environment, you've got the 50% quantize and you've got the full quantize as well. So you can kind of tap the 50% until you get it into the right kind of space, or you can just go straight to the gridlock and use the main quantize function. So we can kind of take the metronome off now because we've got that set up. So if I go back to the main view, you can see I now have this one clip. I can duplicate that clip. And then we can go back to the pad mode and start recording over it. Um, I can also change the length of this pad, um, this clip as well. So you can see at the moment it's two bars long. So if I want, I can hit double and it'll basically now turn it into a four bar clip. So if I want to kind of record more variation, I've got a little bit more space to play around with. So let's record a little snare over this. So you can see how that goes in. And then I can go back here, duplicate that one more time. And we can add some more stuff to it. So in pad mode, we've now got note repeats, which will work with the system as well. So let's find a sound. And all this is controlled um, by the multifunction knob as well. So I can just change, you know, from 16th to triplet timings. So 16th, uh, eight triplets and eighth timings. And you can kind of see if you if you look at the bottom information bar um, in the um, Ableton Live software, you can actually see what uh, beat divisions you are selecting. So it's quite handy. Obviously you don't have the screen here, so it's a nice way to kind of just see exactly what it is you're doing. So let's record this down, see what happens. So I'm just gonna hit record again. We've got a couple of pads, um, patterns going. Uh, you can do things obviously like control all your levels here as well. So on the touch pads, and this will make obviously a lot more sense once we have a couple more things going. Um, got the auxiliaries as well, so you can send effects. So the auxiliaries here are basically controlling the um, send and return effects. So whatever you've got set up there, you can basically um, control it right here on the controller. 
Okay, so um, obviously with pad mode and with note repeats, you can kind of record things in by hand, uh, which is really handy. Uh, but you can also use the step sequencer as well, which I think they've done a really nice job with as well. So let's go back here and let's just duplicate this pattern here. And now we go back into pad mode and then click on step mode. And you can basically already see here everything that's already kind of been sequenced through here. So, you know, you can edit, obviously get rid of things. And if the pad is longer than um, two bars or four bars, um, you can basically use these buttons at the top here to just navigate to the new areas. So it's just quite nice and hands-on. Everything's right here in front of you. So if we want to go now and just draw in a new pattern, maybe just something a bit simpler. really easy to just go ahead and do that. These blue pads on the left hand side are basically your different velocity sense uh, settings. So if we kind of look for a little build say towards the end of the loop, let's so maybe say over here, take a different sound, so maybe take that sound. So the bottom left is the lowest kind of velocity sense to, uh, setting and you can see the light's a little bit um, sort of dimmer when it's at a low velocity setting. And then you can kind of just keep jumping up in steps of velocity. And let's just see if we hear this when it comes through. So it's a really nice, easy way. You can kind of hear that that's that sort of building now. Um, so even though these pads themselves are not velocity sensitive, you can still control the velocity in the actual steps using this feature. Okay, so let's move over from the drum rack to the next track along, which basically, as you can see on the screen, has um, Native Instruments Massive on it. So I've got my bass set up here. And what I'm going to show you is the pad mode will basically give you just a chromatic keyboard. Um, so you can see the, the root notes, basically, they will obviously be slightly brighter than the others. So you can kind of tell where your, your octave roots are. What you can also do is, using the left and right on the D-pad, you can actually change your um, setting to a certain scale. So here it's set to, this is an Ionian major scale. Basically, the, the keyboard will change depending on whichever scale you kind of set up. And it's kind of cool because when it's set up this way with the eight pads, you obviously have um, in scale mode, everything basically just jumps up an octave, which is pretty, pretty handy as well. So let's see if we can get some ideas down for bass. Um, Okay, cool. So we can just record something really simple like that. So let's go back here. We're going to create a new track. I'm going to put the metronome back on just so I know exactly where I am. And also, I've got my metronome set on count in as well. So it just gives me a one bar count in before uh, the recording actually starts. So that and we can um, again duplicate obviously build on the idea a little bit more as well so go back into keyboard mode um, this time could even use note repeat Kind of, I've got the note repeat set really slow at the moment, set to basically uh, triplet quarter notes. Cool. So we've got these.
two bass lines, um, now it's a little bit of variation between the two as well. We can also use the, um, if I duplicate this one again, there's also the piano roll mode as well, which as you can see, um, it's obviously quite long. It basically just works like a normal um, piano roll and you can kind of see where your steps are. The, the, the lit up keys basically tell you um, where the octaves are. So you can kind of just add a little bit of variation here and you can use the D-pad to basically move up and down. If you hold shift on the D-pad, it basically jumps up and down in octaves as well. So on its own by semitones and then up by octaves. Um, so quite nice also just to put a little bit of variation in every now and again. Just going to find the right space for the notes. Cool. And then you basically would use these buttons at the top here to kind of shift over. So you can see at the moment, um, because of the length of this particular pattern, um, it's going over all eight pads, so you can see the whole thing. Um, you can also change the length of the, the actual clip itself by just holding the shift solo for pattern length, and then just using this to basically set how long you want the pattern to be. So you can kind of take that idea and just basically bring it down to a little bit of a shorter length, so it's a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, cool. So let's see what we have on the next pad. So so here I've just basically got different chops as well. Um, so let's put down something really simple just to start with, and then we can kind of work on, on getting this whole thing together a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go over here, let's just start with a new one, let's put our metronome back on. Just quantize that. Another really cool thing you can do is, depending on your selected clip, you can also do things like change its tune. So I just shifted that up basically two semitones, um, which just kind of brought it a little bit closer in tune with the actual vocal itself as well. Okay, so we've got a couple of elements going here now. Okay, different parts. Um, so on the touch strap, when it's in the touch strip, when it's in level, um, you can obviously control the different levels of the different tracks themselves. So it's kind of cool. You got this little like mixer area here. Um, you can also set things like the metronome level using the Q button. So you can just kind of set your click where you want. Um, click on master. And that'll basically change the master output. Um, when it's set to group on the on the wheel here, what it allows you to do is to basically change the volume for the currently selected group. Now, the reason why this is useful is you might have something else selected, say like the auxiliary, so you're kind of playing around with effects. Um, So you might have that selected, but as long as group's set up here, you can still control the volume of the individual tracks as well. So kind of while that's happening, you could have... Okay, so let's look a little bit closer at the touch strip, um, basically recording things like automation as well, which is pretty straightforward. So if I go back to my auxiliaries and then let's just send, you can see this is all controlling um, send A. If I press shift auxiliary, 
it then switches to send B for the currently chosen track as well. So let's maybe head to the vocal track here and let's send a little bit of that that way. And then I just want to show you, um, if I go to the control level now, this is basically going to give me, on this track, what I have here is, um, it's basically an effects rack with um, a number of different effects macros set up. So I basically have my eight macros set up over here. And you can see that when I'm in control mode, that basically will, will map itself to the eight um, touch strips. So I can control all the specific parts of the effect. They've already kind of thought about how um, Ableton works in terms of putting together something that works in a performance environment. I've basically now got a couple of different clips happening um, on my different instruments. And another really great feature they've built in is the scene launcher. So if in Ableton um, you've kind of used the scene launch, so here you can kind of see I've set things up um, different parts of the track, basically aligned to different scenes you can use uh, these buttons to basically launch different scenes. So it's quite a nice intuitive way to kind of just build your sets as you go. And obviously why all this is happening, bring effects in. Of course, that's going to be set to whatever your global quantize is. I hope you enjoyed our brief overview of Machine Jam and the Ableton Live templates for Machine Jam. If you'd like to know more about Ableton or Machine, check out our website at www.pointblankmusicschool.com.